Today, we're gonna do a turkey that will do you justice any time of year. You do not have to wait till the holidays with my garlic herb turkey with honey pecan acorn squash. I don't know about you guys, but growing up a lot of times, mom would overcook the turkey and the turkey breast would be dry. So with this particular recipe right here, the reason I love it so much is the garlic herb butter keeps all that juiciness, all that fat, all that flavor inside of the turkey breast and throughout where it belongs. And the glaze I make with the honey, with the brown sugar, with the Worcester, and the pecans is gonna really pair well with the perfectly roasted acorn squash. So pull on up, make yourself a plate. It's gonna be spectacular. Now it's time for the star for any holiday table, the turkey. And what we have here is the Omaha Steaks 10 pound pre-basted turkey. It's basted with a little bit of brown sugar and a little bit of honey for just the right amount of seasoning. First thing first, the turkey comes to you frozen. So you wanna allow adequate time for that turkey to thaw. So that, what that means is three to four days in the refrigerator to allow the turkey to completely thaw out so it can be a perfect turkey anytime you take it out of the oven. So there are a couple steps you wanna make sure that are crucial to ensure that perfectly golden brown turkey every single time. So first things first, once you get the Omaha Steaks turkey, put it into the refrigerator and let it thaw out fully for three to four days. That's gonna ensure that your turkey is fully cooked and golden brown every time you put it into the oven. So what we wanna do first before we jump into our seasonings is we wanna take a paper towel and just pat dry the turkey all over, top, left, thighs, wings, and that's just gonna really draw the moisture out of the turkey because the less moisture and water you have on the turkey, it's gonna give it a crispier skin. All righty, done. Okay, now once we have pat our turkey dry, we are gonna jump into our seasonings. So whenever you're making a seasoning or a dry rub for anything, especially our turkey, you wanna have balance, balance in flavor and balance in heat and just a really nice, rounded, herbaceous, tasty rub. So first things first, we have salt, black pepper, a little bit of garlic powder, brown sugar for that little mild sweetness, a little bit of smoked paprika for that nice earthy smoky note, and we have dried basil and dried oregano for that nice herbaceousness. And what you do is just whisk that all together to incorporate all those flavors, and that is going to be the dry seasoning rub for our turkey. Okay. Simple enough, that is step one. Now I can't tell you how many times I go to somebody's Thanksgiving celebration, Christmas, holiday dinner, or just having turkey in general, and the turkey is dry, dry as a bone. The turkey breast is just dry as sawdust. But for me, whenever you're having a turkey, a whole roasted turkey especially, you wanna ensure that breast is juicy and succulent and just super flavorful. So again, first things first, having that high quality turkey is gonna give you the tools you need to ensure that. But even more so than that, we're gonna infuse flavor and fat to even secure that juicy turkey breast. We're making a garlic herbed butter, and that's gonna really lock in and ensure a juicy turkey breast and turkey every single time. So let me show you those steps. What you have here is our food processor. And we're gonna add our aromatics first. So into here, we add shallots, garlic, we add oregano, rosemary, and you gotta always make time for time, a little bit of time. Salt and pepper, can't forget that. And I wanna blend these ingredients together first before I add the butter. Make sure everything's nice and minced, okay? Add the olive oil to that as well for a little bit of viscosity. Okay, and once that's all mixed together, we're gonna add our room temperature unsalted butter. Room temperature is a must, so that way it emulsifies and gives you a nice, smooth butter. 
And unsalted butter is always best as well because you can always add salt, but you can't take salt out. So I can control my salt content by using that unsalted butter. All right, so into the food processor, we have our herbs, we have our shallots, we have our garlic, our salt, our pepper, and this is gonna make for a really flavorful garlic butter that we're gonna stuff right underneath the turkey skin. And when it melts and cooks, it's just gonna just meld and evaporate right there into the meat. Not only add juice and moisture, but really, really good flavor. And we're all about that flavor. So we are blending our butter, all those ingredients, the aromatics, the garlic, the shallots, the seasonings coming all together and just making a really flavorful and super fragrant butter to add and kind of bump up the flavor profile and juiciness of our turkey. So this is kind of what you're looking for. Everything is nice and smooth and incorporated. You see the nice chunks of shallot and garlic and the herbs in there and it just smells sensational. So that is our garlic butter. We have our garlic butter. We have our turkey seasoning. And what we're gonna do right now, we're gonna prep and get our turkey ready for all of these delicious flavorings on top of it. Okay, so once we have our room temperature turkey, we have our turkey seasoning and that luscious, amazing garlic butter, we're gonna go ahead and start getting our turkey ready for our oven. So remember, preheated oven, 450 degrees, but before I put the turkey into the oven, I'm gonna knock it down to 350. The reason I'm doing that is that residual heat is gonna get that nice crispy skin and kind of kickstart the cooking process for the turkey. And it's 350, it's gonna cook it nice and low and slow to that desired 160 temperature in the turkey breast. And it's gonna give you that much desired juicy turkey breast when it's all finished. So let's get into it. You want to remove the plastic truss from the turkey. Get rid of that. And you wanna take it out completely because you can't eat that and it's no bueno. So we get rid of that, okay? You wanna go ahead and trim off that little piece of the tail. You could keep that for gravy or any type of stock. You could reserve that as well later. All right, you wanna take also the pop-up thermometer, remove that as well. Okay, now we're ready for the next step. What you wanna do now is carefully separate the skin from the turkey breast. And just gingerly just work your finger back and forth between the skin and the turkey. Okay, take your time, do it right, because you don't wanna puncture through the skin, because this is a very, another very important step because we're gonna add the herbed butter between the turkey skin and the turkey meat. So you wanna keep all that flavor, all that deliciousness, all that butter, all that thyme, the herbs, the garlic, the shallot, we wanna keep that in here. And as the turkey cooks, the garlic herb butter is gonna melt and just marry with that luscious turkey meat and give you that perfectly juicy bite while retaining that nice golden turkey skin. All right. So that's kind of what you're looking for right there. As you can see, I can reach my hand all the way down to the neck, the opening of the cavity. And once you have that, you want to put that garlic herb butter underneath the skin. You want to lather it and massage it, really get up in there. And now is not the time to be shy. Feel free to use all of this garlic butter because as I said before, it's gonna add flavor and also keep the turkey breasts, nice and juicy, succulent and moist. See, I'm wearing gloves. Gets a little messy, but trust me, the end results will be all worth it. All right, trim off any excess turkey skin. You know, that might get flabby and grizzly along the way, and that's not needed. You can save that again for stock or scraps or toss it in the gravy with the giblets. It'll create a nice flavor, but for the cooking process, we wanna get rid of any excess skin that might be hanging off. All right, so at this point right now, we have our room temperature turkey that's been thawed out and stuffed with the garlic herb butter. What we wanna do now is apply the seasoning. So what we wanna do, a good step to kinda ensure the seasoning adheres to the turkey is Initially, use a little bit of olive oil. 
by putting the olive oil first onto the turkey. That'll ensure that the seasoning stays, sticks, and adheres onto the turkey. Okay. Get the wings, get the breasts, get the legs. Let's get a nice, generous lubrication of olive oil on there. And that's going to allow the seasonings to adhere to the turkey, okay? Not a mandatory step, but it makes all the difference when you're seasoning your turkey or any kind of poultry. All right. Now, once we've sufficiently rubbed the turkey down with olive oil, I want to take some butcher's twine, and you want to trust and tie up the turkey. But before I do that, I have mirepoix here. Mirepoix is just a combination and mixture of carrots, celery, and onions used in traditional French cooking, the base of any stock, any soup, any sauce. And it adds really nice aromatics and flavors when you stuff the turkey with that. So I'm going to take about a half of my mirepoix and stuff it inside of the cavity of the turkey. As the turkey cooks, the mirepoix is going to cook and release the fragrances from the aromatics and also give it a nice herbaceous note and flavor as the vegetables of the mirepoix and the turkey cook. So about half of that, I'm gonna reserve the other half once I put the turkey into our roasting rack. So we're giving it a double dose of mirepoix on the inside of the turkey and the outside, which means even more flavor. All right, that looks pretty good, okay. Now, once we have stuffed the cavity with the mirepoix, we're going to take some butcher's twine and we want to trust the turkey legs. Now, what I'm doing is tying the turkey legs together. It gives the turkey a nice, even cooking temperature, better presentation, and also keeps the mirepoix inside of the cavity. So what I do, a really easy way to trust the turkey leg, is I take the butcher's twine, about, you know, 15 inches or so, and I tie off one end to turkey leg, okay? Easy enough. Take the other turkey leg and kind of crisscross. Take the butcher's twine over, bring it over the other turkey leg, and then you just kind of go back and forth, tying it all together to ensure the legs stay together. Pretty easy, okay? You just go back and forth until all of the butcher's twine has been used and the turkey legs have been tied together, and they're pretty stationary, all right? So go around like that two a couple times, back up, okay, maybe one more time, and then tie it off, okay? So when I tie it off, I take that last little loop, put the end of the string in there, the butcher's twine, and then tie it off, and then turkey legs, Nice and secure. That's how you trust the turkey leg. Very easy, straightforward. That turkey leg ain't going nowhere. Okay, so at this point, what I want to do now is I want to season our turkey. So we take our dry rub seasoning right here. And remember, again, I have the olive oil on there. And just generously season the turkey all over. Because that's where a lot of the flavor is coming from as well. With that dried basil, with that oregano, the salt, the paprika, the brown sugar. Get up under the wings, get up under the wing armpits. You want to get every single square inch, not one piece of real estate left unattended on the turkey. Because this is the star of the table, and you want it to shine like the star that it is. All right, so get up in there. Don't be shy. Okay. Use all of our seasoning, get all the wings, top, bottom, left, right, the thighs, the crease in between the thigh and the turkey breast. Just get all over. All right. Take the rest of that and just kind of sprinkle all over. Okay, now once we have sufficiently rubbed that garlic herb butter between the skin and the meat of the turkey and seasoned it with our turkey seasoning, we wanna prep our roasting pan. So what I have here is chicken stock, about four cups. And we're gonna take the remaining mirepoix and place that in the roasting pan as well and just really add good flavor. 
So between the turkey drippings, the mirepoix, and the chicken stock, if you so choose to make a gravy with the pan drippings, it's gonna make for a really, really tasty bite. So we have our roasting pan, spread out our mirepoix. You want to first, in the first order of cooking the turkey, you wanna go ahead and also uh, use some foil to cover up the wing tips, because the wing tips cook very quickly and have a tendency to burn when you roast the turkey. So what I like to do when the turkey is pretty much done the last 10 to 15 minutes, take off the aluminum foil, and that way you'll have nice crisp turkey tips, turkey wing tips, but not burnt. So pro tip, wrap the wing tips with aluminum foil, and that'll prevent the turkey wing tips from burning. All right, so we have our turkey. We place our turkey breast side up into the roasting pan. And just like that, there you have it. So remember, we have our oven preheating at 450 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and bring it down to 350. And the oven's gonna have that nice residual heat from that 450. Give it that initial nice crispiness, a nice head start on that, but also cook the turkey low and slow. All right, so turkey into the oven. And we're gonna let the turkey cook until the turkey breast reaches an internal temperature of 160 degrees. Because you gotta remember, when you remove the turkey out of the oven, it's gonna have carryover cooking and raise it another five degrees. The reason you might get a dry turkey breast is because you're taking the turkey out of the oven when it's 165, 170. At that point, the turkey is gonna continue cooking even more and raise up to 180, 185. So for turkey or any poultry, to be safely consumed, it's gotta be 165. So removing it at 160, it's still gonna be at that safe cooking temperature, but retain the juice, retain the moisture, return the flavor and deliciousness of the turkey. So let it go for about three to three and a half hours and our turkey will be 160, remove it, let it carry over cook, and I guarantee one of the juiciest, if not the juiciest turkey breast ever. So you gotta stay here and watch and see. So now that our turkey is in the 350 oven, it's gonna to continue to cook for about three to three and a half hours, and we wanna remove it at 160 degrees. Because for poultry to be safely consumed, it's gotta be 165, but we still want that juicy, succulent turkey breast. So we remove the turkey at 160 degrees, let it rest, and it will be turkey perfection as that carryover temperature makes it 165 for one of the juiciest, if not juiciest, turkeys you've had in your entire life. So sit there, lay back, relax, and you're about to see some amazingness unfold right before your eyes. Don't go anywhere, guys. All right, now that we have our beautifully roasted garlic herb turkey, we want to have our side because every turkey deserves a great side. So what I'm making for you right now is our honey pecan roasted acorn squash. It's sweet, it's savory, and it's going to perfectly complement the turkey. So first things first, what we want to do, we have our acorn squash, and we want to slice it into eighths. So you want to slice it, sharp knife down the middle, once, Okay, slice it again, and then slice it in half one more time. Easy enough, do it again. Slice it in half, slice that half in half, and slice that half in half one more time. Okay, and repeat the process for the other squash. Easy enough, nothing crazy, nothing too hard. All right, so once you've quartered your acorn squash, you wanna go ahead and deseed it, everything. So you just take a spoon, and just scrape everything out. Easy enough. Get rid of all the seeds. And if you want, you can keep those seeds, you can toast them and roast them. Season them up real nice and make a nice little snack for the kids. All right, now once you have sliced the acorn squash and removed all the seeds, you wanna go ahead and season it up, get it ready to get nice and roasted and sweet and savory 
in the oven. So you want to start first with a little bit of olive oil. Uh, the fat from the olive oil is going to give a nice hard char and roast on the acorn squash and give it also a little bit of flavor as well. So olive oil, heavy salt, kosher salt preferably. Okay. And black pepper. And just make sure you get all of the acorn squash. Okay. Once all the ingredients are on the pan, just kind of rub and massage and kind of lubricate everything to ensure that the salt, the pepper, the olive oil has got on every square inch of every piece of acorn squash. Okay. Once you've sufficiently seasoned the acorn squash, you want to stand them upright. So that way, every inch of the acorn squash gets nice and roasted and sweet. And as it starts to brown, it's going to release the natural sugars and caramelize those natural sugars and the sweetness already in the acorn squash. Okay. Simple enough. So I have here to my left my oven preheating to 375. I'm going to put our acorn squash into the oven and roast it till it's nice and browned and roasted and caramelized and tender. And once you remove that, we are going to pair that with a honey pecan glaze. Okay, so you let that do its thing. Keep a watchful eye on it. We head over to our pan right here and let's jump into our glaze. All right, so to make our honey pecan glaze for our acorn squash, it's pretty simple and I'm pretty sure that you have a lot of these ingredients readily available in your pantry. Okay, so we turn on our pan to our pan. We're gonna add honey. I love honey, natural kind of sweetness from the honey. Uh, it's sticky, it gives a nice little viscosity to this glaze as well. So I'm a big fan. Thank you, bees. All right, and I'm gonna also add brown sugar. Brown sugar gives you a nice kind of hearty, kind of earthy sweetness with the addition of that as well. And what you do next is just bring that to a boil. As that's coming up to temperature, you wanna add a little bit of Worcester for savoriness and a nice little umami pop. And a pinch of kosher salt as well, cause you wanna have balance and the salt just really amplifies and makes the flavors of this glaze kinda explode and be right up front in your face and just do wonders on the palate for the acorn squash once we roast it. So it shouldn't take too long for the brown sugar and the Worcestershire and the honey and the salt to come up to temp and boil. So let it do its thing. Let all that deliciousness come together. All right, so once our honey and our brown sugar comes together, you wanna whisk that and let it boil for about, you know, about a minute or so to just allow all of those flavors to come together quite nicely. All right, once we do that, we add our unsalted butter because again, we could always add salt, but we can't take salt out. And we add in some roasted chopped pecans. The pecans are gonna give you a nice contrast and texture. It's gonna have the nice little crunchy bits to kind of complement that tender roasted acorn squash, as well as give you a nice savory and salty note. So at this point, we've turned our heat off completely, and what we're doing is emulsifying and making our glaze, and that butter is gonna give you that really nice mouthfeel, and also give you another savory note when it comes to the finishing of the acorn squash. So you let the butter, let it melt, let it do its thing, you're heating up the pecans, getting another toastiness layer on there as well. And that is what you're looking for. That is your glaze. And essentially, you want to keep it warm. Um, and just once the acorn squash comes out of the oven, you're going to hit it with that immediately. And it's going to come together for that perfect bite. Sweet, salty, savory. And we cannot forget that yum factor. So we're going to go ahead, once the acorn squash is done, tie it all together, carve our turkey, and make one amazing platter for the ages. All right, now remember, it's always important to baste your turkey throughout the cook because there's so many flavorful juices and the mirepoix 
When you're roasting your turkey, you want to make sure to baste it about every half hour to get that nice glaze on there. You're getting those flavors of the chicken stock, of the turkey drippings, of the mirepoix, and you're infusing it back into the turkey. So don't be shy and baste about every 30 minutes or so during the cook. Now, you want to remember to always remove the foil from the wings the last 20 to 30 minutes because the wings are cooked. And by having the foil on the wings until the last couple of minutes, you're ensuring they didn't get overly browned and burnt. And back in there we go. Okay, so once our turkey has fully roasted in the oven and the thickest part of the turkey breast has an internal temperature of 160 degrees, that is the time you know it's ready to remove the turkey from the oven. We're gonna let it rest and let all those flavorful juices redistribute and give us the perfect turkey slices and a perfectly cooked turkey when we're ready for that table. So let's remove our turkey from the oven. There's our beauty queen. Perfectly golden brown deliciousness. That's that GBD right there, golden brown delicious. And that right there is what we achieved through air drying the turkey, sufficiently thawing it for three to four days, using that garlic herb butter, basting it with those delicious jus that's on the bottom of the pan. And I can't wait to carve into it, but just wait. You wanna let it rest, wanna let it hang out for about 15 to 20 minutes, that way the juices have redistributed, and then we slice into it. So let it do its thing. Let the turkey take a nap. All right, so once our turkey has rested for about 20 minutes to allow those juices, those also flavorful juices, to redistribute, we're going to carve. So out of the roasting pan onto the cutting board, that is a thing of beauty. All right, so what we're gonna do right now, we're gonna remove the butcher's twine from the legs because that is not going to be consumed. All right, just get rid of all that twine. It definitely did its job. Okay, and then from there, when you wanna break it down, I am going to remove the turkey breast from the cavity. All right, so you just take the knife and you follow it along the turkey. Like so, one incision like that, another incision right here, and you just follow along the breast. Oh yeah, looking good, looking good. All right. Okay. And you see that juice from the garlic butter? It just really, really did its job. All right, so I wanna show you just how juicy it is. All right, you slice as thick or as thin as you want to. You can see that juice, you see that right there? That's flavor, that's from the butter, that's from the resting, that's cooking it at that 160 temperature. That just makes it perfect. All right, so I'm gonna do a couple more slices. Let's line them up here and let the knife do the work. It's a thing of beauty. All right, got a couple more slices. Alrighty, there, beautiful, juicy, tender, garlic herb turkey. All right, there's our turkey. There's the rest of the turkey. To this now, I wanna add some of our butternut squash. Put that right there, nice and perfectly caramelized and roasted. Just arrange that on your platter or your cutting board. Any way you like as you see fit. Okay, that looks good. Maybe one more, why not? I'm a hungry guy. Okay, and then from there, we're going to take our honey pecan glaze and just generally hit that on top of the 
acorn squash. It's sweet, it's salty, it's savory, it's nutty. You got that nice little pop of umami in there from the Worcester, and a nice contrast in texture with the crunchy pecans, and that soft, tender texture of the acorn squash. As much or as little as you like. Little bit of parsley. And there you have it, a holiday turkey I would gladly eat and host any year. Eat up.